Hey, and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Jessa Jeremiah, and joining us first is Kaya Calhoun, who is the owner and photographer of A Sunshine Moment. How are you doing today? Doing well, thanks. Thanks Good. for having me. Yeah, well, we've asked you here because perfect timing to have a photographer and business owner such as yourself with all kinds of spring events coming up. So we wanted to talk to you about the importance of having a professional photographer for your events. So just tell us a little bit about a sunshine moment and you know really what sets you apart as a photographer and business owner from some other companies that are out there. Okay, yeah. Um, well, my focus is very much on serving my clients. Um, and I don't know if that's a business model for everybody, but I know it's very important to me to serve them um, in any capacity. So when you hire me, I'm all yours and you can boss me around as much as you want. Um, as far as hiring a professional goes for your events, it's just really important, especially for like a wedding. Wedding season is coming up. And um, you want somebody to really capture those memories. You only get that day once. Um, and it's really important to have someone to capture that. Um, professionally and fully and just kind of all around feel. Um, what's a little bit different about me is I do it threefold. I focus on the details and the portraits and the moments. So hence the name of Sunshine Moment. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah, and there's so many of those great moments, you know, and that's really important. You, you want to get those, um, you know, sort of important pictures with the right people in it and all that kind of stuff. But you also want to capture those sort of fleeting moments that happen in people's events and weddings and all that kind of stuff that, um, you know, you may not even realize is happening at the time. So mm -hmm. very that's, important stuff. That's what I'm most passionate about. I actually got married about four and a half years ago. and. At our wedding, when we looked back at our photos, it was those moments that I was like, oh my gosh, I would never would have remembered that if I hadn't have had my photographer. That's awesome. So, so cool. And you know, where for our viewers at home who are possibly looking for a photographer for their event, where are you located out of and where do you serve? What areas are you uh, sort of over or will you go to? Yeah, I'm currently located in Milton. I'm moving to Janesville in about a month. Um, but I serve the Madison area and Milwaukee, as well as even down in, um, or yeah, down in like northern Illinois area, um, specifically Elgin, because that's where we used to be located. So I serve there a lot still because I have a good client base there. So I have a pretty big radius and I, I like that. Yeah, so. that's great. Yeah. And so you mentioned that you have done some weddings and you know that's part of a big part of your business. What other kinds mm -hmm. of services and products do you offer for people? Yeah, I, um, I also do a lot of newborns in the studio, which is great, especially through the winter, because it keeps stuff busy even when there's not weddings. Um, I do a lot of boudoir photography. That's be kind of become on the rise for me as a focus. I've been doing quite a few sessions of that, and that's really cool because a lot of women will, will purchase a boudoir package as a gift to their husband-to-be. And, um, and then I also do a lot of families and then seniors in high school, something I've been working on growing as well. Very cool. And for viewers at home who are watching and thinking about hiring a photographer, you know, what do you think is important about hiring an independent photographer such as yourself versus maybe some bigger companies that are out there? Sure. Um, a lot of the bigger companies are great because they have a pool of people that you can select from, but there's nothing like it kind of with smaller businesses too, like when you purchase goods from a smaller business, um, you get a personal touch and you get personal contact that you don't necessarily get with a big corporation. So when I book one of my clients, I'm with you from the start to the finish. There's nobody else meeting with you. It's just me, so I know you, and I could become friends with everybody, everybody that comes into my studio. Like it, We just become friends, and I love that part about it. Very cool. And real quick before we go, a couple questions. One, you know, what's your sort of style, your photography style? Yeah. Um, a lot of people would describe it as very photojournalistic and eclectic. Um, so I like to focus on the unique aspects for sure. That's where my very favorite thing. So I like to um, hone in on what's unique about my clients. So if I'm doing a couple, I like to know about what they love to do together or the kind of snuggly stuff they do automatically. And I like to showcase that versus like, just your typical stuff. Yeah, very yeah. cool. And real quick before we go, if viewers at home want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Website, Facebook? Yeah, um, on my website I have a contact tab 
and that's probably the best way, but then you can also email me. Email is really good too. So those are probably Perfect. the two best ways. All right. Well, yeah. we're going to do just that. Kaya Calhoun of A Sunshine Moment, thank you so much for joining us thank today. You. And hey guys, thanks so much for watching. We're going to be right back. We got lots more Talk of the Town right after this. Hey, welcome back to Talk of the Town. Joining me now is AJ, who joins us from the Boys and Girls Club. And the Boys and Girls Club is actually a news partner of Talk of the Town. So yeah. you guys always are bringing us fresh news, and you've got some fresh summer news for us because we need to know about summer camp. So yeah. perfect timing to have you here. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Um, you know, things are always happening, and right now we're really excited about summer. Um, the main thing is we have five new summer camps we're really excited about. Um, we're getting a chance to serve more kids and um, reach some different areas. Very good. So tell us a little bit more about your summer <coughs> camp program. You know, we're chatting just a little bit, so I'm sure you've got a lot of new things coming up for summer. What can kids expect, parents expect out of these camps? Absolutely. It's a, it's a one-stop shop. We're there from 8.30 to 5.30. Um, it includes, includes a meal. That includes a breakfast and a lunch, or a lunch and two snacks. Um, we run Boys and Girls Club national programs um, with trained staff. We have low ratios of about one to eight with our site supervisors, so that's always great in the summer to make sure that you know your kids being supervised and doing the right things. Absolutely. So some peace of mind for parents, Absolutely. and they don't have a lot of prep to do. It sounds nice. They can drop them off, and you take care of them. As far as the kids are concerned. What kinds of activities can they expect to be doing at these camps? Absolutely. Boys and Girls Club, we uh, focus on academic health and character. So we do a lot with summer literacy. We do a lot of book clubs and we watch a movie, we read the same books, we get physical outside, um, team sports, independent sports, extreme sports. We're doing some outdoor adventure stuff this year that's really excited. Um, and also um, just, you know, some, some funner stuff. Um, we like to be outside play games, kickball, and just get the energy out. It's a long day, it's a long summer, we want them to just move. Yeah, absolutely, and what a great thing for kids to be doing in the summer versus, you know, what could be an alternate activity, sitting at home, watching TV, playing video games, all that kind of stuff, absolutely. which is great in moderation, but let's get outside and have some fun. Yeah, it's great to be around positive adults, you know, their peers. Um, we just want them to just move a lot. We want them to eat healthy. We want them to be engaged. Um, sometimes when kids are unsupervised, um, make poor decisions. Um, we serve kids from 7 to 18 years old. Um, we feel that there's a place for us, for all of them, um, and we're there for when they need us. Absolutely. And tell us for our viewers at home who may want to enroll their kids in this camp, when does the program start and how do they go about getting, that, getting them involved? Sure. Our expansion camps start um, June 16th. Um, they can go to bgcdc.org. They can visit our Facebook page. They can also give us a call at 257-2606. And my contact information is on the website. Um, also, when you call, you can ask for me, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Okay, great. And we've got it on the screen for viewers at home, too. Awesome. So uh, that's nice for them, too. So tell me just a little bit about cost. How much, you know, is this an expensive sure. program or, you know, what are parents looking to spend? Um, our camps average about 160 a week. That includes all your meals, the care from 8 to 530, including your field trips. So we feel it's um, very affordable um, for what you get. Excellent. Yeah. What a what a um, affordable week as yeah. far as camps go. Um, I know they can range from all kinds of different prices and can get pretty expensive. So oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And and for how much that includes, that's really quite cool. Yeah. I mean, you have a day. You have five days of activity activities. You have a full day um, field trip. We have some mini field trips where kids just hop on vans and we go to the movies. We go bowling. We do mini golf and some of those smaller trips again just to kid, get the kids moving. Yeah we have locations but we also want them to see Madison and the surrounding areas of where our camps are. Yeah absolutely and you know you mentioned that you have sort of a range of ages that you know can be involved in these camps. Now do you keep them kind of separated or are they all in one you know kind of group or how does that work? Sure. Um, our Five expansion camps, four of them are for middle school. That's, I mean, four of them are for elementary, I'm sorry. Um, seven to 11 years old. And then we have an 11 to 13 year old camp out in Verona. So we try to keep them um, with their own age group. Um, we find obviously kids are more comfortable around kids their own age. They feel like they belong um, and they're just feeling more free to be themselves and just really get going and get involved in, in quicker time. 
Absolutely. And then tell me a little bit about, you know, who is sort of over um, these different groups. So, you know, is it, do you have like camp counselors mm -hmm. or, you know, what kind of age groups are, are involved in the sort of supervision? Sure. Each camp is a site director um, and then they have youth specialists that support them. Youth specialists are what you might call a camp counselor or group leader. Um, their job is to strictly deal with the youth um, and the site director, you know, they provide the support whether there's an issue, maybe a small medical issue, they can pull them out of ratio and get them taken care of. They talk to the parents, um, they make sure that everything is clean and ready to go that day um, and basically that the, the plans are going to be executed to have a fun summer day. Very good and all kinds of fun activities for lots of different age groups Absolutely. for the summer. So um, if, if parents have further questions, email you or? Yep, my email is right on the website. It's a Kriya. K-R-I-H-A at bgcdc.org. You can find it right on our website. Again, you can give us a call at 257-2606, um, and we're always active on Facebook, too. That's easy to reach out. Absolutely. What a great way for kids to spend the summer. Thank you so much, AJ, our news partner from the Boys and Girls Club. Thank you guys for watching. We've got lots more Talk of the, time, talk of the Town coming up <laughs> right after the break. Welcome back to the Talk of the Town. Joining me is Dr. Marcia Schaefer, who joins us from Spring Creek Family Chiropractic. I had to make sure and get that right. <laughs> so uh, as I was just telling Dr. Marcia Schaefer, I'm very excited for this segment because she's here to talk about options for infertility as they're related to chiropractic. So just get us started here. You know, how, first of all, you know, the first question on our minds is, what does chiropractic care really have to do with fertility? Well, just to make sure that we know, chiropractic is not a treatment for infertility, but as a chiropractor, I'm trained to look at the nervous system. I'm trained to see how the body is functioning, and when you have a properly functioning nervous system, pregnancy is something that's easily attainable. And this is so interesting. So, you know, I'm going to ask you more questions, you know, about that specifically, but how did you get into this field? Uh, in 2010, I was diagnosed with cancer. My husband and I had a three-month-old son, and it was just, I chose not to do conventional treatment, and um, the foundation that I learned there, I actually started working with my moms that are trying to be, become pregnant with nutrition, with chiropractic, and all those different things, and we've been incredibly successful. Very good. So, um, you know, as people come to you and they're getting a diagnosis of all different kinds, I'm sure it varies, you know, egg quality, sperm count, monthly cycles, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, is this all something that they should consider still? Is this still part of, you know, what they need to talk about with fertility? Or, you know, tell me how that sort of plays in. Absolutely. Most of the couples that I work with actually feel that they had tried everything. They've exhausted all their options. Uh, they felt the cost and the side effects of conventional fertility treatment were just causing them to lose hope until they found what I could offer them. So it's been a very rewarding experience to help these moms. Absolutely. So for those who are watching who maybe are trying to conceive or maybe having difficulty, you know, give us some advice. What kind of advice can you give, um, hopefully future mothers at home, um, you know, who may need some help, some guidance? Definitely don't lose hope. Know that chiropractic is a viable and natural choice. And as families are moving more out of the drug model into the natural and holistic model, they're looking for other options. We don't want moms to be having a painful pregnancy or sick all the time, or that we want them to enjoy pregnancy, and it can be an amazing time in their life. Absolutely. So um, once they are, once they conceive, then are they going to continue with their chiropractic care throughout the pregnancy, or is it really just leading up to pregnancy? How does that work? Um, actually, chiropractic care during pregnancy is absolutely amazing. It helps mom because obviously her body is ever changing. She's got these stresses that are new <laughs> to her and chiropractors are able to really help mom get through that process. I'm also Webster certified which the Webster technique is a technique that works with the mom's pelvis and really helps mom have the best pregnancy possible. Very cool. So um, as far as leading up to pregnancy and, and then once you are, once you do conceive, what kinds of other things are, you know, are a factor, lifestyle things? Do you address other concerns as well? Absolutely. We deal with a lot of different lifestyle things. With my cancer diagnosis, nutrition was a huge, huge portion of healing. And I find that actually a lot with the moms that need to become pregnant too. So 
the problem is all the good nutrition that you do, all the good things you do, if your body doesn't understand that it needs to take it in, that's where chiropractic plays that role. Your, your body needs to understand what you're doing. Chiropractic is that foundation that really can carry the pregnancy through. Very neat. So tell me a little bit more about that. How does chiropractic sort of play a role in things like nutrition? You know, how does it help that sort of process along? So basically the central nervous system, which is your brain and your spinal cord, send nerves that go out into the body. Well, think if you put your foot on a garden hose and that water couldn't go out, that's how your nerves are when, when your spine is not functioning properly. So is your stomach getting the messages? Is your, is your body understanding, especially hormonal changes? We have so many moms that haven't gotten a cycle for a year, two years, three years, that get their cycle back. It, they weren't deficient in drugs, they weren't deficient in any of those things, they just needed a different approach to look at their body. Isn't that so interesting? You know, we always, sometimes we get so segmented in thinking that, you know, this is the symptom, this must be the problem, right. and, or vice versa. So it's so important to remember that everything really works together. Right. And, um, you know, you need to address the source of the problem and not just the one symptom. So thank you for reminding us of mm -hmm. that. That's uh, such a cool lesson to learn. So for viewers at home who are watching and want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Uh, the best way is to call our office at 608-592-2763. Okay, great. And we've got all that info on the screen for our viewers at home. So, Dr. Marcia Schaefer, greatly appreciate the information and you spending some time with us today to share with us the importance of chiropractic care as far as fertility is concerned. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching. We're going to be right back. We've got one more great guest right after the break. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. Joining us now is Sandra, who joins us from the Children's Museum. So thank you so much for joining us. We've got lots of questions for you Great. about summer and late spring visits. Mm -hmm. So tell us first, you know, we always come to the Children's Museum on a, on a rainy day or a cold day. Mm -hmm. It's a great activity to get out of the weather, but you've got some activities for us on nice days too. So why, tell us what's in store if we come on a beautiful sunny day. Well, I think one of our uh, premier places to visit is our rooftop. And what I always describe if you haven't been there before, it's like you have to think of it as a park in the sky. So our total roof structure Structure is an outdoor garden environment and we also have a clubhouse so there's chickens and pigeons um, we are constantly growing things up there where kids can plant and dig and sample we also have our herb garden which is our outdoor um, urban patio off of our early learning of space and then we also have our historic log cabin which also has great outdoor spaces in it as well Lots of fun things to do mm -hmm. and visit in, in good weather. So that's Absolutely. really cool. We're going to have to do that. And I want to ask you, you have a large gerbil wheel. Is that correct? Yes. Larger than most. So to, what's yes. the scoop with this? Well, it's a, it's a human-sized gerbil wheel. Oh, my gosh. And so it's, 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 quite, it's quite spectacular. Um, but it's also a really great science um, principle. So kids get in it. They can see how the energy that they're expending, making it spin, lights up different lights. So it's a really great uh, science experiment. And I would say that adults love it almost as much as the kids. I was just gonna say, it kinda, kinda sounds like fun. I might have to check it out. It is I don't very know fun. if we can go on it, but <laughs> <laughs> what a cool thing and what a great way to learn something kind of fun and mm -hmm. active for kids to do. So, um, you know, you've got all sorts of great things for children to do. What do you think is your um, I guess sort of target age group or age group that like just loves the museum the most if we're thinking about bringing our kids in you know give us an idea of r age range. Well I think what I love is that we are a place that you never outgrow. Our primary visitors are we serve our birth to 12 year olds really really well um, with interactive hands-on play that's self-guided self-directed. We also have camps and classes etc but what's really nice is that um, as children get older, there's volunteer opportunities and internships. We've developed teen workforce development programs. And then we also have a whole host of adult things that uh, people can take part in, particularly our adult swims, which are every, every month this summer, um, there's a different theme night. So we're open in the evenings for adults so over 21. 
And uh, so really, you never outgrow play. So How cool is that? So that's wonderful. So you've got a lot of things geared towards, you know, very young yes. to 12 year olds, but yes. there's always ways to get involved and learn some great lessons. It sounds like volunteering and doing other Absolutely. kinds of things. So great. So it's for all ages. Excellent. Yes. Um, so tell me, you know, summer coming up here, we, I'm sure you've got some events planned as you guys always do. Mm -hmm. So what, what things are in store for us coming up? Well. Um, we kick off summer with uh, the Rotary sponsored, the Downtown Rotary sponsored Summer Palooza. And this is on June 14th and it's, you know, school is out, it's a big summer uh, kickoff. And um, what's really nice, it's also a celebration of community. So the Rotary, Downtown Rotary funds a lot of different agencies in helping them fulfill their missions. And we invite all those agencies to partake in our parade to really show our whole community what um, Rotary helps fund and sponsor in creating a really connected and healthy community. So all of those groups come and they help out in the parade. We'll have um, performers and activities and it's all outside. Side. We also have free admission all day that day and so it's just a really great big Saturday on the square and so that's our big kickoff to summer. And then for those of uh, our audience uh, members and visitors that love American Girl, we have our American Girl uh, sale of seconds and returns that happens in July. And so we also have um, tickets available, I think the postmark they have to be postmarked by um, the 27th of this month. Oh wow, so all kinds of stuff going lots on. Lots and lots of stuff. We have camps, there's lots of spots for camps yet, uh, for school age kids, and every day there's something new going on. Sounds like it. Gosh, lots of activities. So we're going to have to probably check out your website and find out a little bit more. That's a great way to find yeah. out what's happening every single day. Perfect. So we'll get in touch with you that way. And I want to ask you, too, a little bit about admission. And, um, you know, if families at home are looking to sort of be involved over mm -hmm. the summer, you've got a, a coupon deal, too. So let's talk about yes. that a little bit. Well, our regular admission rates are seven ninety five per person. Um, but we also understand that not every family has um, the resources to to, to pay that much or right. even for uh, membership. So we try to make um, our entire museum accessible and friendly and welcoming mm -hmm. to everybody in our community. Yeah. So we have access members, uh, memberships and admissions. So anyone receiving any type of public uh, uh, assistance yeah. can use our dollar admission or a reduced memberships. Cool. We also um, are hoping that our um, audience that are watching today will make their own coupon for a buy one get one free admission and Very just good. use the CW code. Very cool. Well, we're going to do just that. Thank you so much. We are out of time, but guys, make your own coupon. Come on into the Children's Museum for buy one get one and thank you so much. You guys, thanks for joining us today. We're going to see you next time for Talk of the Town. Have a good one.